Why do so many people think it's hard to get the hang of driving a stick shift? Uh, well, I don't know. You got to use uh, three different pedals. I find it difficult to figure out what gear I'm in. You got to shift gears all at the same time and stuff. So you might hit the clutch in the wrong time or something. I don't know, person. Welcome to License to Drive. Parking is an important skill to master. You have to steer in the spaces that are sometimes narrow, judge distances from curbs, parked cars, and passing traffic. It requires patience, precision, and in special circumstances like parking on a hill, you have to take extra precautions to make sure your car doesn't roll away. One time I parked on a hill and I forgot to put the emergency brake on. I got out of the car and I was going into the store and I turned around because I heard some yelling and sure enough my car was drifting back into traffic. But thankfully my friend was in the car and she was able to put the emergency brake on. But I was still pretty embarrassed. Speaking of cars, Tommy, when are you going to let me drive yours? My dad taught me how to drive a stick shift, you know. How about right now? Um. On second thought, I changed my mind. We're on a hill, you drive. It's okay, you can do it. Check to see how much room you have behind you first. Okay, I'll try. But if I hit anything, it's not my fault. Since you need your right foot for the accelerator and your left foot for the clutch, you won't always be able to use the brake pedal when starting uphill. So, make sure that the parking brake is securely set. Press the clutch and shift into first gear. Slowly begin to release the clutch while at the same time putting pressure on the accelerator until you reach the friction point. Then fully release the parking brake, accelerate as evenly as possible to minimize the distance you might roll back downhill and to move forward steadily without jerking or stalling. That's okay, give it another shot. Good job. Now, let's see how Julie did. For starters, she's not wearing her seatbelt. That should be like second nature. It should be the very first thing you do before you even turn the key to start the car. On Julie's first attempt, she stalls Tommy's truck. She didn't accelerate and release the clutch evenly. Julie pulled out too fast, and came too close to the car in front of her. Finally, it's nice that Tommy had enough confidence in Julie's abilities to trust her to try such a tricky maneuver in his truck. But given her lack of experience with the task at hand, she should have practiced this difficult maneuver in a safer place. Car one was parked facing downhill and the driver forgot to turn his wheels toward the curb. Sometime after driver one left his car, it began to roll down the hill with nothing in its way to stop it. Driver two was in the oncoming lane of traffic and was talking on her cell phone. She did not notice the car until it had veered into her lane of traffic and reacted too late to avoid the collision. Who's at fault? Driver one was at fault. He should have turned his wheels to the right. This would have caused his tires to wedge against the curb and stop from rolling down the hill. However, if driver two had been paying closer attention, she would have noticed that there was no driver in the car coming toward her and would have had more time to respond. Parallel parking is hard enough, but getting out of a tight spot when you're on a hill is even tougher. Just relax and take your time. Don't get discouraged if you stall or don't get out of a spot on your first try. When you park on a hill, if you have a manual transmission, make sure you leave it in first gear or reverse. An automatic transmission should be in park, and for both types of transmissions, always double check to make sure the parking brake is on. As an added precaution, make sure your front wheels are turned in the right direction. 
If you are facing uphill, turn the wheels away from the curb. If you're facing downhill, turn your wheels toward the curb. And if there's no curb, the rule is to always turn your wheels away from the road to prevent your car from rolling into the street. Your front wheels when you're parked facing uphill with a curb on the right. A, turned away from the curb, B, straight, C, turned toward the curb, or D, none of the above. The answer is A, turned away from the curb. What are some things you dislike about parking garages? Paying. You gotta pay like a million dollars for a spot. It costs too much money. Too small. Uh, it's dark in there. It's, sometimes it gets really scary. You have to go up ramps and stuff like that. I don't like being in such cramped little spots. I'm kind of claustrophobic. Parking garages can be very dangerous places to drive. Not only do you have all the hazards of a regular parking lot, like pedestrians and vehicles pulling in and out of spaces, but you're also in a dark place with low clearance and very little room to maneuver. Drivers backing out of a space may not see you coming, and other cars may surprise you coming around a blind corner. You have to drive very slowly and constantly watch for pedestrians and other vehicles. Most incidents in parking garages are low speed uh, impacts. So if it's car versus car, nine times out of ten there won't be any injuries. But a lot of times people won't be looking behind them while they're pulling out. And as people are leaving their car towards the elevator or the walkway to get inside the building, they'll be hit by a car backing out of the spot real quick or someone trying to even pull into a spot before someone's out of their car. Hey, where are you going? You missed a spot right there on the street. What? I'm not parking my brother's new truck on the street. I feel safer parking it in the parking garage. It's your money. You better take it slow in there, though. The ceilings look kind of low. There's a spot right... Whoa. Whoa! I didn't even see that little car coming out of that truck. There are lots of hazards that are difficult to see in a parking garage. A compact car, a motorcycle tucked in a parking spot, kids running around the corner, a pedestrian walking out from between two cars. You've got to drive very slowly and cautiously in a parking garage because in such a confined space, anything can happen. Well, this place is getting on my nerves. I gotta slow down here. You better, because if you mess up your brother's new truck and your father grounds you, I'm gonna have to find me a new chauffeur. <laughs> Roger drove very cautiously when he entered the parking garage. Both he and Felipe were aware of the low ceiling and the unexpected appearance of vehicles. The other thing they could have done was turn on their headlights. It would have helped other drivers to see them as well. Even with the high vantage point of an SUV, Roger couldn't see that compact car hiding behind the pickup truck. But he should have anticipated that a spot that appeared open might have a vehicle in it. He pulled in way too fast just as the car was backing out. Driver one was backing out of a spot near the entrance to his level in the parking garage with his radio turned up extremely loud. As he was backing out, driver two came speeding up the ramp to the level that driver one was on. Driver two got to the top of the ramp and collided with driver one. Who's at fault? Both drivers were at fault. Driver one was at fault for not fully checking behind him while backing up, especially at such a dangerous location. By playing the radio too loudly, he made it almost impossible to hear approaching vehicles. Driver two was also at fault for driving too fast, given the low visibility and limited space. Maneuvering in the tight confines of a parking garage can be difficult. We don't expect a collision to occur when we are parking. 
Maybe that's why so many do. If you're the one backing out of a spot, make sure you do it very slowly. Only when you have a clear view in both directions should you go ahead and pull out the rest of the way. Oh, and don't forget where you parked your car. Name some difficulties of parking garages. Pedestrians, reduced visibility in dark places, spaces appearing empty may be occupied by a small car or motorcycle, or it's difficult to see when pulling out of a space. Why do so many young drivers fear parallel parking? Fear parallel parking because it's hard. It's difficult and you have to like finagle your way into a spot and a lot of times there's not enough room. You might have traffic coming up behind you. There's a lot of pressure while you're doing it. I always think I'm going to hit something. The, if they don't pass the parking part, they can't get their license. That's the truth. Parallel parking is not something that comes easily. Parallel parking is part of the driving test that many new drivers dread. It probably is the hardest form of parking to learn. It's even difficult for seasoned drivers to master because every situation is just a little bit different. Parallel parking involves parking alongside a curb between two parked vehicles. You have to back up, often into traffic, and if it takes multiple tries, it can be very frustrating and even embarrassing. When I first started driving, I had to pick my sister up in the bus station in Center City, and I'd never parallel parked before. So I got to the station, and luckily there was a spot right in front of the station. So I pulled up to the car in front, just like we were taught, tried to back in, couldn't do it. So I backed out again, tried again and again, and I still couldn't get into the spot. At this point, I was blocking up traffic, and there were a couple cars already behind me. People started yelling things and honking and different people were, you know, saying like, you know, you've got to pull in closer or pull out again or cut to the right. And I was getting really flustered. So finally, I just pulled out of the space and went around the block and found another space. Okay, you need to parallel park and you can't avoid it. Here's what you do. First, pull up next to the car in front of the empty spot so the right of your car is about three feet away from the left side of the parked car. You should stop when the rear bumper of your car is even with that of the parked car. Look over your right shoulder and slowly back into this space while sharply turning the steering wheel to the right. Aim the rear of your car for the rear right corner of the parking space. When your steering wheel is even with the front vehicle's rear bumper, straighten out. When the front end of your bumper is even with the rear bumper of the vehicle, turn your wheel sharply to the left. Slowly back up until your vehicle is parallel to the curb and straighten out the steering wheel. Want to see it again? Line up your car with the car in front of your desired spot. Looking over your right shoulder, slowly back into the space while sharply turning the steering wheel to the right. When your steering wheel is even with the front vehicle's rear bumper, straighten out. When the front end of your bumper is even with the rear bumper of the vehicle, turn your wheel sharply to the left. Slowly back up until your vehicle is parallel to the curb and straighten out the steering wheel. Parallel parking is simple if you know how to do it. The first rule is to stay calm and focused. Don't let waiting traffic unnerve you or make you rush. That's when you make mistakes. The key to parallel parking is practice. Eventually, you'll perfect a technique and wonder why you ever had any problems in the first place. Where should you position your vehicle to begin parallel parking? A, alongside the first vehicle, B, alongside the second vehicle, C, in front of the first vehicle, or D, behind the second vehicle? The answer is A, alongside the first vehicle. What do you think about people who park in disabled parking spots? 
If they're disabled, it's okay. What if they're not? Then they're stupid. I think it's immoral, but uh, I've done it once. Uh, I think it's very rude. I, th I think they're jerks. I think, I think it's wrong. There are lots of different types of parking spaces and zones that can get kind of confusing. You have to really concentrate on reading the signs around the spot before you park there. It could be marked for disabled parking or as a loading zone. Either way, illegally parking in an incorrect zone can get you a ticket or even your car towed. Uh, commit is when they would go to and park in a disabled or handicapped parking spot. This requires people that need the spot, either the elderly or the disabled, to walk quite a distance. It's very important to realize that you should not park in these places. And a lot of times it's simply people are too lazy, they think they're just going to run in, in and out of the store and they're not going to be there long, or they're too lazy to walk the extra couple feet. And this creates a problem. When this occurs, usually a motor vehicle summons is issued. Phil, will you stop at the mall for a few minutes? I have to pick up Mom's birthday present. I know what I'm getting her. I'll just run in. No problem. I'll go in with you, too. I can't believe it's this busy. Have you ever seen it like this? No. Maybe they're having a sale or something. We're not going to be long, right? I'll just park in this disabled spot. There are a few of them. We probably shouldn't. Disabled spots are for people with disabilities, not for drivers who are lazy or impatient. The fines for parking in a disabled spot are pretty hefty. Before you do it, take a moment and think about the people you'd be taking the spot from and ask yourself, is it really necessary for me to park here? You're right, Al. We shouldn't park here. It's not right. And Mom wouldn't appreciate getting a fine for her birthday. Philip clearly saw the disabled parking sign, but because there was no place closer to park, he decided that he was entitled. He was wrong. Allison was right to discourage him from parking there. And in the end, he made the right decision. Look, park a little further out. Enjoy the exercise and the fact that you don't need one of those spots for yourself. Always be aware of signs next to or even near a parking spot. There may be a sign that prohibits parking at certain times or only permits loading and unloading. If you're parking on the street, check the curb. If it is painted a color, there may be some restrictions on parking. Even if there aren't signs to follow, there are still guidelines that tell you where you shouldn't park. Never double park. Don't park more than 18 inches from the curb on a sidewalk or bicycle path, or in front of a driveway. And don't park in a designated fire lane or near a fire hydrant. These are all common sense. Use your head when it comes to parking your vehicle. A good parking spot might be an illegal one. Avoid the headache of a fine, or maybe even having your car towed. What color is usually used to indicate a disabled parking space? A, orange, B, green, C, red, or D, blue? The answer is D, blue. So, you've learned how to get out of a tight spot with a manual transmission, how to parallel park, and how to maneuver in a parking garage. And you've learned that there are some places that you can't park. Parking your car may not always be a life or death situation, but it's not without risk. Whether you park on the street, in a lot, or in a garage, just remember to take your time. And as always, be safe.